Uh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, I see some people here already. Um, so I got my chat up. Can somebody give me a shout out? Make certain that uh, you can hear me uh, and see my desktop. Just let me know in the chat or raise your hand or whatever. I can hear you. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, so as usual, you know, I, I mean these to be more like help sessions or question and answer sessions. So, you know, feel free to shout out something or type it in if you have questions or things. Um, my plan, I mean, at this point, I mean, it looks like, um, most people have submitted the, the written, first written problem set. Uh, so as a reminder, that's supposed to be due today by 5 p.m. So I'm planning on, um, sending out, uh, late notices to people here at 5 p.m. after we're done with this, uh, um, help session. Um, and those should be graded sometime by tomorrow morning and I'll post an example solution, right? So I, I've been getting questions from people, so I know people are working on them. Um, I have a question, Professor. Sure, go ahead. So on problem set one, problem two, uh -huh. tip number four, I got result on PC302 and for AC006. Um, I just want to make sure is that right. I got well, right. <laughs> uh, uh, well, okay. Let me, let me just bring it up. But I mean, I might not, I might not tell you whether it's right or wrong, you know, but uh, okay. let's see. Um, um, but yeah, if, I mean, if, do you have a question about why it not might not be right or wrong? So, yeah. Me, yeah. Go ahead. Let me see if most of the, most of the AC I got, it was less than four, three, two, but I got six and eight on two steps. Okay, um, I should have had this up to begin with. Oops. Um, so which, which problem again was that that you're asking a question about? Uh, problem set one, problem two, step four. Problem, uh, okay, problem two, step four. So there's problem one, there's problem two, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, so one, so your first fetch execute should have been for an instruction one, which was a load, right? Yeah, load. So hopefully you loaded um, your AC from there. And then at that point, you should have been uh, executing the 5941. Um, so five is an add. So, you, so yeah, adds basically add um, the, the contents referred to, to whatever, whatever's, whatever's in the accumulator. Okay, so yeah. yeah, you should have been um, uh, problem two. So you should have been adding together, um, yeah, your contents of, of the 41 and the 40, basically. Does that answer your question? So on step four, I'll be adding the AC from step three to a step four, right? Yeah, so I mean, in step four, you, the, the contents of your AC got changed here at step two, and they're gonna be there at step three. And then at step four, when you're performing the operation, you know what the contents, so, so every time you're doing these, all you have to know is what the contents are uh, of the memory when, you know, of, of memory and the PC, yeah. and AC when, um, yeah, when you're performing the operation. So yeah, you know what the AC is, you know what the instruction is, it's an add instruction, you know what the contents of 940 or uh, 940 is. So, so yeah, then you perform uh -huh. the operation and that's gonna update the AC at step four. Okay, so if the number goes like zero zero six zero zero eight, it's fine, right? Uh, yeah, I mean that that could certainly happen. Yeah, so. Oh, okay. That, that sounds right. No, no question. Thank okay. you. Sure. Let's see. Um. All right. What else? So yeah, I hope most people have gotten pretty much like through the written problem set. So um, yeah, we, we talked, you might want to look at the help session last time. We did talk about uh, negative numbers then. Um, so uh, I'll repeat a little bit uh, uh, what we said about uh, uh, there. So um, the, the, the hypothetical machine 
um, from our textbook defines a format for numbers. So the sign bit is supposed to be one to represent a negative number and zero for a positive number, right? So, you know, if, if you have a negative result, this is just what I showed uh, last time. Um, so, so depending on the magnitude, so, so if you have a magnitude of five, uh, hexadecimal, um, the, the bit pattern for that is, you know, each digit represents four bits. So, you know, it's zero, 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 one, zero, one. So that's a five binary, um, which is equivalent to hex, you know. So this is all kind of conversion stuff. So, I mean, the, I guess the question is, make certain that you get the, the representation right. So we're just using a simple signed representation. So if you want to represent negative five, um, you know, the, 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 the most significant sign bit as described here has to be one. So the most significant bit, the only difference between that and what I showed previously is that the most significant bit is one, but the magnitude is still five, all right? So that is the binary representation of a negative number, like negative five. All right, does that help? Hopefully, but that's the, the basic idea. So, and that's typical um, of, of machine representations of, of integers. Uh, although, you know, a real machine uh, would probably use, you might have run into, uh, in our course on machine architecture, you probably should have talked a little bit about things like one's complements and two complement, and things like that. So, no. Um, so, the, I mean, that's not one. One zero 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 binary is not one. So that's, that's incorrect. So you have to, to know how to convert, you know, <laughs> Four, four binary digits into a hexadecimal digit. So you might want to review that. Um, so yeah, anyway, right. So we're not using anything complicated like one's co complement or two's complement. So another thing that, that I wish more students understood, yeah, so, you know, this is an integer format. So it's good to understand, like, for example, if you want to work with floating point numbers, there's a, there's a similar definition, but mo much more complex for a floating point number. So whenever you need to represent floating point numbers, um, you have to have things like a, a sign bit like you do for an integer number, but uh, you usually also break, you have, have to have some bits for the magnitude, uh, but you also usually have some bits that represent uh, a power. Um, so, so you might have, so you might represent numbers, think of them in scientific notation, like, uh, so you'd put it in standard scientific notation. So if I wanna represent uh, 1,234 five, eight, seven, six. Um, in scientific notation, that's 1.2345, let's make it easy, six, seven, eight, times uh, 10 raised to the third power, right? So, you know, what you would normally do for something like that is you would represent, normally they throw away this because they, they assume that all the representation of floating point numbers is in normal scientific notation. So you would just represent in binary, so this, this is in decimal, but in binary, these digits, so that would be in the, the bits to represent the magnitude. You'd have a few more bits to represent the power for the floating point number. And then you would still have a sign bit so that you could also represent uh, a negative floating point number. So a single bit for a negative or positive. So anyway, you know, that's, that's another kind of common format that we often have to deal with, um, you know, at the machine architecture level. Um, all right, so yeah, I did want to get started talking about assignment one here, unless people want to ask more questions about the hypothetical, hypothetical machine. Um, I hope everybody's reading the announcements. Uh, you should do a get poll if you haven't done that. So I had some uh, fixes to the build environment. So again, you should be able to do that from your, uh, you know, either from your host machine or, or from a terminal inside of your dev box. 
Git pull, whatever I tell you that I made some updates, you should be able to do a Git pull and it'll pull it down. If you're already up to date, it'll tell you you're already up to date. So you don't have to do a Git pull if uh, or you've already done it. You've already got everything that I pushed out to you in the class to get that. Um, yeah, so this week you should be reading chapter two as a reminder um, on the operating system overview. So this chapter is about, um, you know, kind of the goals of, of operating systems and, uh, you know, uh, kind of the structures that we need, um, um, the considerations we have to do when we're designing an op the components of an operating system and performance issues and things like that. So a big picture sort of thing of operating systems and what we need them to do, what they are, you know. So an operating system is really, to me, it's a glorified um, you know, manager, right? It's just, it's just a manager of resources, but it's complex. O operating systems are some of the, are, are probably the most complex software that we build nowadays, because there's lots of stuff you have to manage correctly on the computing system to, to manage multiple processes and multiple users, trying to use the system simultaneously and, and all the um, resources, memory and stuff, so, which is the, you know, the, the topic of this course that we'll be talking lots and lots about. Um, all right, a uh, little thing here. So if, if uh, I mean, I think this would be helpful if you find the time. Um, so for the videos I've been posting for this class or updating um, a, a new kind of course from MIT has been popping up. It's, a, it's only a series of like 10 videos, but they go over uh, in more detail than I have so far, like using the command line. So, so um, the, the bash shell and, and the tools and stuff. So, you know, if you're interested in, in actually kind of mastering these things, you might want to at least the first two videos and maybe the fourth one, the, the third video is on the VI editor. Um, but, uh, but yeah, all the videos look like they're really good. So I've been learning some stuff of my own uh, watching the, the later videos on this thing. So. Um, okay, yeah, my plan was to, to kind of actually write the first function with you all for assignment one, which I, th I know maybe, well, I still don't have as many people as I thought I might have today, but, uh, you know, and, and of course, we've still got, you know, help sessions next week as well, so, so we'll continue going through the assignment one, but at this point, you really need to have the problem set done your dev box needs to be up. You need to know how to build stuff. So you, you, you did the make submit on the example one. So as a reminder, you know, some people still hadn't seen the announcement even as of like today or yesterday. There is an additional step that I didn't have in the getting started video. So before you can build the assignment one or the example one, you do have to do um, a make in the libs directory. So this builds a, um, a shared library that we use everywhere else. If you don't have that, um, you'll get a link error. So, so if, if, if you don't have that library built before you try to build any of the assignments, um, uh, you'll get a link error here. And, and I kind of wish that maybe I hadn't redone this because it always takes a while to compile the unit tests here. So. Um, but yeah, take my word for it. But so, so if you see an error, well, I'll come back when that comes up. But uh, so let's look at assignment one. So um, all the assignments have the assignment descriptions as a PDF here. So you, so you can pull that up um, and use that to, to read the description and um, all the steps that you have to do for the assignments, right? I'm probably going to start today, right? Here, the your your actual work description kind of begins step by step on these unit test tasks, right? But you shouldn't skip over reading the the general description of what you're going to be doing. So, but yeah, for this assignment, you know, since you had to do the the hypothetical machine by hand, you've got kind of a good idea of what you're trying to build a simulator of um, for this unit. So. Um, so, so yeah, there, there's the link error that you'll finally get if you don't have that built. You know. So once again, you have to change into the lib directory, libs with an S, and make that 
um, and you should have this lib simulator exception dot a this is a this is a library file also called an archive file so if you know what a dynamic link library is in like windows if you ever heard of that it's, it's the same kind of idea this is something we can link other projects against in order to use this this library code that we created so So anyway, let's uh, let's use Visual Studio. I don't think I've actually used that much for our help sessions yet. Um, for assignment one here, um, you can actually get the documentation um, using the Markdown file as well. Right? I'm going to give you back your feedback for the assignments for the Markdown file, so it might be a good idea to know how this works. Um, also, um, so let me just repeat. Um, let me just close off this folder. So if you're using Visual Studio, which you should for the assignments for this class, I'll do all the examples in this and it's already set up to have the hooks to use the build system. So, but, but you should always start by simply, I mean, it, it, it'll remember the folder you have open. So you really don't have to do this once. But if you don't have the folder open, do a, um, not add folder to workspace, but just open folder, control K, control O. And don't open the particular assignment, um, as some people have found out. So you should just open the top level, CS, CI 430 OS Sims, okay? Because all of, the, um, all of the hooks and the definitions to build all of the assignments happen at this top level just in one place, right? So they're all using a common uh, build system and uh, tasks and stuff. So, so yeah, just open that. And then to work with the assignments, just, um, um, you know, you can open up the assignment, assignment one, and, and do the stuff from there. So, um, as I started saying, you can actually also look at the Markdown file. So this is, this is Markdown, um, but you ought to kind of learn what this is, because like I said, I'll also give you back your assignment. Uh, feedback as Markdown files. But uh, Markdown uh, is a markup language, like maybe HTML that you know about, and there's other kinds of markup languages. So it uses um, like a pound for a level one header, two stars will bold stuff. You can use a dash to get bullet points. You can create simple tables by using um, the, um, the bar. Um, this will create a simple table. Uh, and there's other markup. Uh, but yeah, so but, but this is just plain text. So you can always open up one of these markdown files in plain text. Um, the reason why I'm using these is, is again, this, this is becoming kind of a, a standard. So you'll see these used a lot now to document projects and, and, and they're popping up in lots of places. It's just a lightweight way of creating documentation for things. But th these normally have renderers, okay? So, so basically it's like a little programming language, these kinds of markup. Um, and then you have something like a compiler or a, a previewer or a render in this case. So, so if you want to see the, um, um, the the more rendered version, you can you can hit that over there. Or there's a keyboard shortcut, right? So this will have uh, this is another way instead of using the PDF. Basically, I use a similar thing to create the PDFs. Uh, a, a, a tool called Pandoc that can render from the Markdown and create a PDF file from it. But you can you can make an HTML file from Markdown or or PDF um, or other kinds of output uh, render files. And, and basically, yeah, it's rendering. You know, it's rendering the level one headers as, as headers and 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 uh, bold. A little hard to see the bold. I, I wonder if there's a way to make the background white. But um, and, and your tables and things. So the the three ticks. Um, I, mean, I didn't really want to close that off quite so quickly. The so if you want to have examples of code, you use three ticks before and um, uh, after all the way down here. So that'll give um, a block um, that's rendered um, as um, as uh, what do you call it? As, as, as explicit code, basically. So. Um, okay, so as usual, all the assignments that you have should always be building and running 
the way I give them to you, okay? So uh, let's start by opening up the assignment one tests here and, and I'll leave the assignment description over here on the right so we can read it. Um, yeah, I might close that off, get a little more room. So yeah, if you do a, like a clean, control shift C and a build. So I haven't done anything on this project yet, I don't think. Um, yeah, so as usual, it'll take a while to test. Um, so, oh yeah, in this case, you won't have to, um, um, so, so a lot of, all, all these test cases, I don't know if all of them are, so sometimes I might give you assignments where some of the test cases are commented out, and you might have to um, uh, uncomment the test case, right? And sometimes you might have these test cases not initially enabled, and that's basically because, um, um, so I might, so in this case, I gave you actually all the functions. They, they just don't, don't have an implementation yet, right? But, but if I didn't give you the function, you might have to first write the function before you can actually get stuff to compile. So, but yeah, you shouldn't have to do that for this first assignment. Um, so yeah, it's really still compiling. So um, 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 it will take a little bit of time to compile the unit tests. Once you get this compiled one time though, usually you're, you're only gonna be changing for this class, the, the, the function, the, the code um, that you need to write. So you want to write the test, so, which is nice because if you don't have to recompile the test, uh, it goes a lot quicker uh, once it gets compiled once. Let's open up the uh, hypothetical machine simulator dot um, HPP and the hypothetical machine simulator. Let me close off the MD file and the dot CPP file here. And they're finally compiled um, uh, the, 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 the tests. And now I'm wishing that I hadn't made a modification in that. Um, and it linked together. So, you know, I've talked about this before. So it compiled separately the tests and the hypothetical machine simulator.cpp. It linked those together into a test executable. Then it compiled the assign, assignment 01 sim separately. And it linked that with the same hypothetical machine simulator object file into another. Um, executable called sim, okay? So now at this point, if I don't make any changes to my test, I shouldn't have to recompile this. So maybe I'll undo all that. So All right, there. Um, so I think I just un Un, did an undo until I was back to before I kind of typed some stuff in there. All right. So, um, so basically, we're implementing a the the our hypothetical machine, but as as a simulation. So, kind of as I described last time, real quickly. Um, so, uh, basically, what you end up getting as input are these .sim files, which are in the sim files subdirectory. So you can look at one of those. It's just a plain text file. All right. So basically, um, I, and I already wrote these functions for you that opens up this file and loads these in. Um, although you do have to write like um, some of these member functions to get this all working correctly. So, you know, we start with a program counter of 300. The accumulator initially has zero in it. Uh, we're we're going to define that the simulation uses memory from memory addresses 300 to 1000. And these are the contents of some of the memory. And any memory that's not specified should have a, a, a value of zero in it. But uh, memory address 300 has a value of 1941, um, and so on. Um, so the first thing you have to do is implement, implement the initialized memory function. Okay, so um, 
so now, so we're calling initialized memory. So, so we're testing it. So this is even before we do. So, so the, 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 the function I was mentioning that loads from a file calls the functions that you need to implement, like initialized memory. Okay. So as we describe here, initialized memory takes two parameters. You can see um, um, the, the beginning address and the end address, basically. Right? Um, and it doesn't return any result. Um, so it's a void function. Um, so what you need to do is actually allocate uh, some memory dynamically um, and then initialize it all to be zero uh, for your initialized memory. And then, um, and then I can't remember if if the I think you have to access I think you have to implement the the these getter methods as well get memory base address get memory bounds address. Let's see. Well, let's take a look. Okay, so. Um, Let's look at the header file and let's skip over that. So there, there's classes and things, but uh, the, the class you'll be mostly interested in is the hypothetical machine simulator. All right. So this is a C++ class um, that's mostly defined for you, including a bunch of member, member methods, some of which um, you're going to have to implement and has a bunch of member variables that are all private, okay, including the memory. So the first one that we're gonna be working with is memory. So this is a, a pointer to um, uh, integer. So, um, you know, you might have to go back and review doing dynamic memory allocation, but we need to create an array to be able to hold our memory uh, here. And, and that's what's trying to be described uh, in the um, step one here. Um, So you, you can actually um, get past these first unit tests. Bef you, know, you don't have to worry about the dynamic memory allocation initially. So let's just do what we mean by that. So it's always a good idea to try and do kind of the simplest things. So, so try not to write a lot of code. Do simple things to get the test passing and then later come back when you have to uh, and, and, and add more functionality. Right? So here really all you need to do to get memory base address, bounds address, and memory size working is initialize some of the member variables, okay? So in this case, uh, we've got memory, we got member variables called memory base address, memory bounds address, uh, and memory size, okay? So in this case, if the base address is 300 and the bounds address is 1,000, th those should be what the base address and bounds address get initialized to, and then the size should be the difference of those. So the, the, the bounds, the end minus the beginning, the base address, okay? Oh, and by the way, uh, we implement this this way because later on when we talk about memory uh, management and address translation, this is a common way to, you know, define like a base address and, and, and then to be able to translate from a virtual address into a, a real address. So we're doing something like memory address translation here that we talk about later in this class that we'll, we'll refer back to uh, here. So, um, oops. So let's look at the um, the initialized memory function. Let's find. It. So, so you have to find these functions. Um, um, so the, the the header file HPP is going to have just the declaration of the class. So most everything you're going to do, everything you're going to do in this first assignment, actually happens in the .cpp file. So the implementation file. Uh, which I probably already opened up here. So let's pull that over here. So you might want to search, uh, but you can scroll through here. Um, so, so like I said, you know, a lot of like, like I already implemented the constructors for you and the destructors, um, um, the uh, reset function, uh, the, the load function, which, which can load from a file, but for load to work, you know, you have to have, um, the implement the, the um, initialized memory working and some other stuff. And here's initialized memory, right? So, and I actually already have some comments down here as well um, for you to follow, right? So you're given, I need some more room a little bit. Yeah. 
you're simply given the base address and the bounds address, okay? So you need to set those member variables to be what you're given here, right? So, so again, you know, the, the class member variables we've got to hold all that information, memory base address, memory bounds address, and the memory size. So, so these are the begin and end addresses of the memory that we need to simulate for our hypothetical machine simulator, like you did by hand, where you were given a view of some portions of memory that you were simulating by hand, right? Um, so yeah, the, these, these um, the, the parameter names have exactly the same names as the uh, member variables, okay? So I know some people aren't used to doing that. Um, so let me just show you, so, so I mean, but this is very common convention. So normally people do do that. They, they, make the, the ver they make the name of the member variable be the same as the parameter name, and then they use this to differentiate. something like that, right? So this, since the names are the same, and, and I only use this inside of a class member function like this, uh, when I have to differentiate, right? So when otherwise, when otherwise there's some ambiguity involved, right? But yeah, since the, the parameter name is the same as the, um, the name of the member variable, uh, we can differentiate. So without this, it's gonna assume you mean the parameter name, the value that's passed in as the first parameter here. But with this, um, it's going to uh, resolve to be the, um, the member variable name, memory base address. Okay. So again, to understand what I'm talking about here, you need to know how to work with classes uh, in a programming language, like a C++ class here, and what we mean by member variables. Um, of course, you need to know how to, to write functions and pass parameters into functions and all that kind of stuff. That's all kind of stuff I assume that you know how to do. Um, before coming into a class like this. Um, all right. So yeah, like I said, if you do that, um, but because I, I think I already wrote the git, I must have already written these git accessor methods for you. So you should be able to find those. Um, um, you know, you, you just scroll through here or we can do a search. Let's see if we can find the git. Uh, memory base address and get memory bounds address. There's, there's the get memory base address. So again, it, it just returns memory base address, okay? But here, you know, we don't use the this, um, but since we have no parameter name by that name, you know, that, that this is perfectly legal C++. If, if you, you can refer to member variable names of your class, uh, and in this case, we just return it. So this is an example of an accessor method. So, so, so get memory base address returns the memory base address and get memory bounds address returns the bounds address, right? So um, um, I probably should have shown that these were, were failing uh, before I actually uh, fixed these. But so now by initializing those in the initialized memory, so before they just had values of zero. So both of these tests were failing um, because if you ask for get memory address, it returns zero and zero isn't equal to 300. But after we initialize the base and the bounds address to 300 and 1,000 respectively, we, we expect if we ask what the memory base address is, uh, we'll get 300 and, and 1,000 for the bounds address. Okay. So let's go back up to our initialized memory. So if I save that and I build, Control shift B builds, or you can always do um, run uh, tasks. Um, I thought there's a run tasks here, so I guess I'm wrong. Uh, you can always use the command palette. Control shift P does a command palette. So um, I think I, I talk about this in the, um, 
getting started video and using Visual Studio. So, you know, th there's only, there's, there's a lot more commands that you can get to than what you can get through the menu system. So and this tab, yeah, so as I've already used it, but yeah, you can, you can run tasks to, to do the things like clean and build and, and run the tests. So here, so I, I already added these in. If your dev box is set up correctly, so you can do the make all to build everything, make unit tests to do the unit tests or make clean. Make clean is is um, bound to Control Shift C. Make build make unit tests. Or sorry, make all is is um, bound to Control Shift B for build, and the tests are bound to Control Shift T um, to do the tests. All right. So yeah, the, there's a lot in here, um, but um, kind of nicely for Visual Studio, um, I've got it set up so it should always re start, you know, uh, clear out whatever was in the terminal. So you can just scroll right back up to the top. So to the, your normal workflow, when you're doing things like this, um, so um, uh, what did I do? So I somehow lost, uh, so, so yeah, here are the, um, 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 I don't know, when paying attention to how I deleted that, but uh, yes, yeah, so I was only setting the bounds address. For some reason, I, I deleted that. So, so, so yeah, the the um, the um, uh, so notice if, if you look closely at the tests, uh, 34 failed because we're not setting the memory ba base address. That's what gave me pause. But but 35 didn't succeed. It got past that one because we were successfully initializing that. Uh, but then 36 failed because we were not setting the, the memory size either. So. Um, oh, I, I know what I did. So um, I'm using my my memory muscle. I'm using the wrong keyboard bindings. I'm trying to do Emacs keyboard bindings. There we go. So I accidentally deleted it before. So so yeah, if we have those two in, I expect the first two tests to pass. So let's try and build. So yeah, again, if, if you don't change the tests, um, it, it should be relatively quicker to build um, and then run the tests there. So yeah, my, my normal workflow is make a change, build, control shift B, build, control shift T, tests, find the first failing test, um, and Bob's your uncle. So yeah, we're passing 34, 35. We're not passing the get memory, uh, the get memory size uh, test at 36 because we're not setting memory size, all right? Um, So again, memory size, to know what these memory, what these member variable names are, you know, you do have to kind of look back and forth. Um, but, but yeah, it's just called memory size is the member variable that gets returned by get memory size. So you could also search for get memory size to see what that function is doing, right? Uh, but, uh, but yeah, we're expecting, it, it, this is just the difference, okay? So the, the total memory size is gonna be the, difference from the end minus the begin or the, the, the bounds minus the base address. So all right, oh I did it again. <laughs> all right, so save it. Again, never add more than a line of code or two. Save build test. Because it, once you get to the point where your your thing isn't compiling and the tests aren't running, um, and and you can't get back to a compilable state, you're going to stop making quick progress and you're going to be lost. Okay, so too many students add in bunches of code and then try to go back and get it to compile, but that's not the right approach. Add one thing, compile it. It's still compiling. Test it. It's testing but failing and see where, where you're at with the first failing test. Okay. So now we're good. We're actually passing test 34, 35, 36, um, and we're getting down to um, the test at, oh, 36 failed. Um, so, oh, I, 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 I uh, oh, yep, easy error to make. Um, so I said it right, but I, I, I did it wrong. So you need to do bounds minus base, not base minus bounds, so, so the end must begin, or else you get negative. If you have any questions while I'm doing this stuff, um, type them out or shout them out. 
Okay. We'll see if I did that right instead of messing it up. Build test. That's what I was expecting. So we finally got past 34, 35, 36. Um, notice that we, we got even further along than you might have thought. So when we do a reset, it actually resets everything to zero. So we expect after reset, but I've already written the reset for you. So it expects the base bounds and size address to be zero um, before you call initialize memory and initialize stuff. Uh, it actually gets all the way down to 53, okay? Um, so yeah, if, if you weren't quite doing some things correctly, so this is a little bit more of a complicated test, um, but yeah, if, if you have a, a base of 42 and a bounds of 917, you should end up with a memory size of 917 minus 42, if you do that correctly. So. Um, So how are we doing with time? Yeah, I got about 10 more minutes at most here. So yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and um, implement this because, you know, I also know even though it's, it's not, you know, I mean, people should not only be able to write classes and functions um, in a 400 level operating system class, but they ought to know how to do like dynamic memory uh, and, and manage memory and things like that. Although I know lots of people um, are fuzzy on doing those kinds of things. So. We will be doing these things uh, in the rest of the assignments, so you know you might want to brush up on those. Um, let's look at this failing test. So uh, just just to to to, to show you here, um, most of these functions we're also using catch throw exception processing. Another thing that that you probably should have run across at some point uh, when you're learning to program, at least once you get to upper level. Um, so here we're expecting that um, if we initialize memory, um, that, that we, we, we make it, we just give an arbitrary thing because of the way that we wanted to uh, assign addresses here. So we, we want to only make certain that valid, we're actually kind of using hexadecimal, or sorry, we're actually kind of using decimal instead of hexadecimal. Uh, but 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 um, yeah, we all, we only want to have the remember the the three address digits. Um, we if we're using a, a sixteen bit address, if I've still got up the um, hypothetical machine here, um, only allows us to have three digits for an address. Okay, so just to make things simple, we only allow memory uh, from like zero up to nine nine nine. Right, this is the only kind of valid memory that we can simulate on these simulators, right? So this is just kind of testing that. So, so what you need to do, uh, so throwing an exception is relatively easy, and this is why you need that library. Um, so you should be able to find an example of, of throwing, which I actually I'm gonna do instead of trying to write this by hand. So if you do like control, um, uh, what is it, uh, to find, control F, the control F to do a search and, and like search for throw. Um, I have a commented out one there, but um, so yeah, here's, here's the easiest example. So to, to throw an exception, you just need to create like a string and then do a throw of one of these simulator exception classes. So I'm going to just copy that and uh, let's go back up to our function that we're writing. or actually that throw is above this. So um, so if you do an initialized memory, and, and you probably should do this beforehand because it doesn't make sense to do the initialization um, if you're doing something illegal. So, so, uh, so, so to handle this case here, um, and I, I talk about this in the assignment description, but um, so, um, So in this case, I want to actually check the parameters before I use them for initialization. So if memory is 
so it should be uh, um, 1,000. Um, actually, I, I probably meant to test uh, 1,000 rather than 1,001. So, so, so you should be able to use 1,000. So, so if either of those is bigger than 1,000 or, or actually less than zero, if we want to be, um, uh, so, so a complete test of this would be if the base address is greater than 1,000 or the, um, so we're going to need parentheses around all these. With the memory bounds address. So again, I might add in um, checking whether they're less than zero as well, although I can see that I don't really need to do it here because I'm not making a test like that for like a negative address, which um, would also be meaningless here. But uh, if we have those, we can uh, paste that in there. And um, so the reason why I kind of show it like this is that you can add some things to the message that you send. So, um, so for example, um, it, but it doesn't really matter what, the, I don't test that you have the exact message. So you can put whatever you want on these uh, as long as you're throwing an exception. So. So we can do something like say base or bounds address is invalid and tack in, uh, I'm gonna have to convert these to strings in order to add them on here like this, but uh, something like that. I might have to include something to get two string. Eh, no, I think I tried. Readability, I probably would like these to be about like that. So I'm just creating a string by concatenating some strings together. So adding that and adding a string of this, putting a space between these and a string of that. So. So um, yeah, if I did that right, so, so now it should be doing what we're expecting. So it should throw this exception um, specifically because we're trying to give a bounds address that's greater than uh, a thousand. So, oh, don't mean hundred, I mean a thousand there. So, um, there we go. All right, it built, right? So, uh, so I kind of violated what I was saying though. So I maybe should have um, at least made certain that just the if statement was, was building before I tried to copy and paste. But anyway, um, so, so we're building. So again, the reason why I build incrementally like this is, is so, you know, even though I, I added kind of more than a line or two, but I, I can, if I have to, I just throw that away without um, you know, too much worry about it. If, if I can't figure out why it's not compiling, I'll try a different approach you know, so, to get it back to being so it can compile. And let's run the tests. Um, so there, so, so notice we got past that and our first failing test is now at line 60, which is in the next um, test case. So. So, oh, no, I'm, I'm actually wrong. So um, uh, an unexpected exception. We were expecting simulator exception there. I'll have to check that. So, um, oh, um, uh, no, we got the unexpected expected exception there. So, so yeah, I did, um, in order to pass my tests, um, so I do allow a thousand, uh, oh, I should have known that. So, um, so yeah, you shouldn't check whether it's equal to a thousand. <laughs> uh, so that was bad advice. Um, but, uh, but yeah, now that I think about it, my tests aren't really very good there. I should probably, ch I should make it so that they, you can only go up to 999, but, uh, but yeah, that's the way the tests are written. I'm not gonna change it now. So, so you should go ahead and, and check for 1001 there. So 
are greater than a thousand, so strictly greater than would, I guess, also work. Um, all right, we're building. All right, I think that's better. So now we get really far. So we get all the way down to line 71, um, and I didn't see that exception. So, all right. So yeah, that's that's kind of the exception that you need. And then finally, yeah, I'll just do four minutes real quickly. But uh, so to simulate this memory, uh, we're going to be using an array of integers. Okay, so so um, um, so the actual memory is an array, but but we're, we're going to you need to di you need to allocate it dynamically, um, and I think you have to initialize the contents to zero is, is what I described. So so yet more stuff that really should be done in this initialized memory. So, uh, in, the, in the comments are, are, are kind of talking about this. So, um, these hypothetical machine classes can be reused. So, it could be that, that we already ran a simulation with it, and we're going to reset it and run it for another simulation. And in that case, you might you want to free up any previously allocated memory. So, you can just do that with a delete, right? Let's make certain that that builds and runs. Uh, um, um, but uh, you should be careful. So you should only do that if memory is currently null. Um, or, or sorry, if memory is currently not null. So, so that's valid to actually delete it. So. So you get when you're doing stuff like this. I don't have a test um, that that's checking this right now, but at least I can make certain that it's still getting to test seventy one uh, to to line seventy one before it fails the tests. Right after I added those lines of code there. Right, so I think we're still okay. Um, but uh, but yeah, the, the new the, the thing is is that uh, this is the most important one. So um, so if we check that and we if 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 it's non null, um, uh, we'll just delete it. So we can allocate some new memory, right? So, um, so we're safe at this point. And notice I'm using the memory size. Okay, so the amount of memory we need for the simulation, and e -M -O -R -Y, um, is going to be determined by the base and the bounds address. So, you know, if we need 700, if we need enough memory to be able to hold 700 values, that's the amount of memory we need to dynamically allocate. Um, Make certain that builds and runs, and, and all the tests run still the same down to line 71. All right, and then like as a, as a final step, so if you don't initialize the memory here, you might have garbage in it. Um, and um, that won't hurt you here, but later on there might be some places where you get some strange errors if you don't initialize the memory to zero because uh, it, it shouldn't be strange because if you're not doing this, there'll be some places that, that explicitly tests uh, that memory should be zero where nothing has happened in it yet. And if, if that's not the case, um, um, you might fail those tests. So. Let's, let's use an index variable called address. So address, so again, at this level, um, these really aren't memory addresses. So these are really just the indexes. So, okay, so I'll just use IDX for index. Because we just need to go from zero up to the memory size and initialize all that. So yeah, all, all the values in memory, um, um, if, if you looked at that, I mean, it's just integers. So, you know, again, we're, we're not handling floating point numbers. Um, we, we, can, we only kind of represent handle integers in the simulation. So, so, so 
we'll just use an integer type here. So let's build. And test. And so on. So that's pretty much the implementation of the initialized memory. And, and if you do all the things I showed here, um, like it's showing, you'll actually be able to get all the way down to line 71. So you'll, you'll be passing, um, well, not too much, uh, the, the, the first few tests of the second test case. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's so, so, all right. You do have to, to get the translated address working. So, so your second, that, that should be your second task. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to wrap it up here, but um, um, so, so if you look in, uh, oh, so to get translate address to work, you first have to do peek and poke. Um, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, I skipped. Uh, so, so yeah, you, you do translate address next. So, so translate address basically, so, so here, I mean, this is an example of going from a virtual address to a real address. So the, the, the array always starts at zero, but our simulation um, is, is thinking of memory as, as starting at memory address 300. So yet we have to translate address 300 into index zero. So that, that's all translate is doing. It's, it's, it's translating from the virtual address space defined for the simulation into the real address space, which is the memory index of our memory array, all right? That's what translate address is. And then once you have translate address, we can start, we, you can implement peek and poke so that we can actually start getting values in and out of memory. Um, and then, yeah, once you're at that point, you're about, that, that there is a few more things to do, but you, you'll, you'll be far enough that you'll be able to actually start loading programs um, and getting them to execute. Um, well, um, and, 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 and working on the stuff you need to do to, to do the execution. So. All right. Um, yeah. So, uh, any last quick questions? The, the the guys that are still here. I'm gonna have to run. If not, um, I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting. But yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to email them to me. You know. So hopefully everybody's got your your written problem set done at this point. So I'm going to be going checking those in a little bit. So, all right. And that's all for this session today. I'll see you guys next Monday.